spoilers ahead! Did someone just die in the finale of Fate the Wink Saga's second season? No, no, let me rephrase this. How many departures did you miss? What the hell did happen in the last episode? Here are all the things you would only notice the second time you watch the new season. Fate the Wink Saga Season 2 had what some would say is the most unexpected ending in the entire history of cinema. Did they really have to go that far? I mean, we're only in the second installment for God's sake. You have time, you don't need to turn into Game of Thrones this quick. Thanks to one single character, we're now getting into a new era, a new Alfie world, one where we won't see many of the faces that we met in the first installment. All of those deaths plus the wildest cliffhanger left us with so many questions that'll be explored in the next installment of the series, if and only if the show gets renewed for another season. So, as you remember, the end of the second installment features the fan-favorite Bloom conquering the Blood Witch Sebastian. A bit later, she was traveling to the Realm of Darkness. For those not familiar, the series is based on the successful Nickelodeon TV series. The show is set in the fictional world of Alfia. The story focuses on a fairy named Bloom, who, as we found out in the first installment, holds on to an ancient power known as the Dragonflame. But her link to the Dragonflame becomes a problem in the second installment of the series, especially in the finale. The thing is, it's been a long time since the Dragonflame was last seen. To be more precise, it's been a thousand years. Apparently, Bloom's mother was the last person who used it. Since she knew that her daughter would inherit it, she put Bloom in magical stasis. She then left Alfie and went to the Realm of Darkness, but we later find out that Bloom was brought out of stasis when she was just a baby when the Blood Witch village of Asterdell was attacked, and so Bloom was raised on Earth having no idea about her past and those magical powers. Look at you, proving me wrong. I could show you some pointers. What's you left? There is, however, the bad guy who knows all about Bloom's past. There's actually a group of blood witches who survived Asterdell. Their leader is the most dangerous one, Sebastian, a person who wants nothing but the dragon flame with which he'll return his lost loved ones. By doing this, he'll destroy Otherworld. This storyline proved to be a really intense one in the entire show, but in the finale, we're not even sure if Bloom has succeeded in her plan to destroy villains or if she became one by not knowing much about her powers or how to control them. In the first installment of the series, we discover that the fairies have some incredible powers, but there's always the villain who, by using some tricks and techniques, becomes equally powerful. By seeing the power of several fairies, Sebastian opens a portal that can take you to the realm of darkness. This is the most dangerous place viewers saw ever since the beginning of the series. We also discover that Sebastian thinks he can unite the power of the dragon flame with the realm of darkness's own magic in order to bring back those who were killed at Asterdell. There is one thing, however, the portal of the realm of darkness can only be closed from the other side. Because of this, Bloom is forced to enter the realm of darkness in order to save Alfie with the dragon flame. Yeah, we know a lot happened in the second installment, and if season 2 was this wild, we can only imagine what'll happen in the potential continuation. Netflix has already confirmed that you need to smash that like button if you haven't done it already. Now seriously, what happened with Aisha, Stella, and Terra? Are there some things you missed during their transformation? Let's find out, shall we? Good admit, feels pretty good. Fate the Wink Saga Season 2 features Bloom's friends at the peak of their powers, at least so far. They use a form of magic that hasn't been utilized for a long time. They all get into their wings forms. In order to use their abilities to their maximum power, the fairies need to also use their wings. When they're in the form of humans, their powers are limited. Bloom went through this transformation at the end of Season 1, and her three friends go through the same transformation in the second installment. Their magic combined helps a lot in the defeat of Sebastian. We also discover that the fairies can only go through this transformation if they use all of their emotions. Now, there are some fans who missed one important person that appeared in the final episode of Season 2. Did you guys see Bloom's mother? Mom? Now, we all know that the fairies are not immortal, which is not the case with Bloom's mother since she's been living in the realm of darkness for a long, long time. Throughout the second installment, Bloom has visions of her mom living in a dark place, one identical to the realm of darkness. In those visions, Bloom sees who she believes is her mother in chains. In this realm, the dark elves are able to raise the memories of anyone who strayed into the realm of darkness. Damn it, these shows. So many realms I need to remember. There are hundreds in Sandman, and now there will be dozens in the Wing Saga. Anyway, 
In the final episode, Bloom sees a person whom she thinks is her mother. If this is her mother indeed, she might face some issues with her because her memory is erased. Do you guys think Bloom's mom is still holding onto the dragon flame? It would be fun to see a mother and daughter duo with the same powers, that's for sure. There were also some fans who missed one not so tiny detail. We're gonna see a new threat in season 3. The fight hasn't stopped yet, although Bloom managed to defeat some monsters so far. A new one has been released in the final episode of season 2. According to some fans, this new creature we see is Darkhar, the very powerful villain in the Winx Club season 2. This villain is also known as the Prince of Darkness or the Shadow Phoenix. I'm telling you, the next installment will be really, really intense. Now the big question is, who dies in season 2? And what, destroy the school? Your friends are outside fighting for you. While most TV shows tend to keep their characters alive for at least three or four seasons, that's not the case with Fate the Wing Saga. Actually, there are more than a few deaths in the second installment. More precisely, there were so many deaths that we had to make a list. The first one to exit the series was Ivy. This character loses her life before we get to know her. She dies in the opening scene of season two, and her death sets the plot for the second installment. The next character who departed the series is Andreas. Andreas was one of the biggest obstacles for Bloom in the second installment. But even though he was known to cause some problems, his death was still heartbreaking. Yes, we still believe that Andreas' death was surprising and unexpected, but no one, not one single soul, expected Rosalind's death in the second installment. Honestly, we all knew that she was going to die at some point in the series, considering the way she was behaving, but in season 2? Really? Oh, and the way she dies! She is burned to death by Bloom. Another character we lost in this season is Beatrix. Just like Rosalind, Beatrix also showed a suspicious attitude and it was just a matter of time until her attitude was considered a potential danger, which is why she lost her life. Beatrix lost her life because of the next victim, Sebastian. One of the new additions in the second installment had a short time in the series, and to be frank, his death was quite satisfying. After all, he was the biggest problem in the second season. At one point during the show, Bloom says that you need to smash that subscribe button and notification bell so you'll never miss any of our videos in the future. Seriously, Sebastian caused so much chaos in the final episode and he was finally defeated by Bloom, Terra, Stella and Aisha together. See you in the next video.